Hey everybody, it's Lebo. Welcome to another episode of Lebo's Pinball, where I take you through some cool stuff of what I did to a pinball machine, or bring it back to life, or just give it a once over, um, all kinds of different stuff. So today, what do we have? We have a 1968 Williams Lady Luck. It made 3,202 of these. Uh, I think Norm Clark is the designer for this game. And uh, this game is, it's got an interesting story about how it came came about for me. Uh, and I will dig into that a little bit more later, but let's just kind of get a good overview of it all. What do you say? Here we go. So somewhere around five, six, maybe seven weeks ago, I get a phone call from my dad and said, he said, hey, I've got a friend of mine who has another friend of his uh, who has a pinball machine supposedly for sale. Hey, whenever that happens, you got my ear. I want to check it out. So I got the phone number and gave this very nice lady a call and she said, yeah, I do have one for sale and uh, I'd love for you to come take a look at this and, and uh, let's kind of talk about it and, and go from there. So we made arrangements for me to swing by and take a look. And uh, first thing I did is I saw this game, Lady Luck, and this is it. And it needed some work. She was wanting to sell it. And when I looked at it, I was a little hot and cold on it if it was one that I really wanted to own or not. And I kind of hem all around and wasn't, wasn't really sure, but I, I, I decided, hey, how about this? How about I go ahead and take it to work on it, fix up some things, and we'll either go look to get it sold. That was really the main plan is we were just going to go ahead and get it sold. I was going to help her get it to a point and we were going to work out a deal from that and just get it to where it was more presentable and, and uh, get, a, get a good price for it and get it sold. So from there, I decided to go ahead and take it home, go over it all, and uh, really just kind of give it a, a good overhaul. Uh, not too deeply extensive, but enough to really make it, you know, make it 100% functional, make it look nice, and just not go too overboard with some things that, that would require a lot more time and a lot more effort. Uh, but I was glad I did. I brought it home and it tore the whole play field down. Uh, it, it got the full treatment. And while going through this game, when I got through and got, got it up and running 100%, that's when it kind of struck me. This game's really cool. Uh, I had never heard of this game before and really didn't know uh, much at all about uh, some of the unique things that this game does. But the, the cool thing that's about this game is that it's, it, it's sort of merging pinball and blackjack, or really, I guess, uh, 21 is really kind of the right way to say it. But not only are you just playing a regular game of pinball, one of the main objectives is that you're actually, you've got a hand and you're trying to get 221 and you're trying to, to beat the dealer. And if you beat the dealer, then you get an extra ball. And it's really an addictive game. The more that you play it, uh, you, you start learning some good strategies with it, and I'm really impressed. And because of that, I decided, you know, I think I might like to keep this game. So that's that's the backstory on it. So the first assessment of this game, when I really got to looking at it, I noticed that uh, you know there are several bulbs that were out. It had all the original incandescents, and uh, some of the rubber, well, all the rubber bands needed to replace. They were either they probably weren't original. Um, but they were definitely aged. Uh, some of them were just about to break, if not already broken. Uh, the flipper mechanisms were in pretty tough, or I'm sorry, pretty rough shape. Uh, I think the right-hand side, the, the bushing was completely shot, and the whole mechanism, it, every part of it really needed to have, uh, it needed to be replaced. And uh, it, it just, you know, it got, it got the overhaul, the, the pop bumpers, um, some of them were sticking, they would stick on and it was having a meltdown on, on, uh, I think there were two coils that actually had, uh, some heat damage from where they were, they were getting stuck on. So that they got replaced the coils for the flippers themselves, the sleeves that were inside of them, uh, they were seized in and they couldn't, they couldn't come out. So they had to be replaced as well. The big thing that I think that is a bit of a detractor, unfortunately for this game, you notice on this right-hand side, it has the original artwork. 
and it's actually not in terrible shape. Uh, the, it is, you know, it's worn away in a couple of spots, but this game is from 1968. You know, this is a, this is several years old. The detractor is if you notice the front, and let's come around to the other side. And that other side of the artwork's gone. And it doesn't look bad. It's, it's just been painted over, it's white. But for the original look, the original nature, that does unfortunately take away from the value of the game. But I, to me, it doesn't bother me. Um, I might actually in time, may go to the effort to try to recreate all that artwork and redo it. However, there's not a stencil that's currently available for it. So I would have to either get one created, which is possible. Uh, the, the Pinball Pimp Company, I, if I send him scans, he can actually produce this. And he has agreed to do that before. Um, he's not actually done it for me on other games because I just decided not to do it, but it is possible. However, the geometry on this is not too awful hard. It might be something that I could recreate and just do it manually without having to go get a, an officially made stencil. So for an old EM game, what I really like to do is keep it as original as possible. That said, I do like to put in warm white LEDs and uh, sometimes I will color match uh, a, a colored LED behind a colored insert. Uh, but I typically don't go adding a lot of other things to go make, make the game customized. I, like to, I just like that original look. I think it's more classy that way. So for this game though, um, again, just as far as the, th the work that was done, so these flipper mechanisms, uh, everything here was new. The only thing that wasn't new uh, was just this actual arm itself, but, but the, uh, the bushings, you know, the plunger, the linkage, um, the coils, the springs, uh, all, that, all that was rebuilt. The, uh, let's see, let's get down to here. Lots of switches had to be cleaned, um, new sleeves, um, and I think the slings, they've gotten new ones. Uh, the switches down through here are new. The pop bumpers, there's four of them total. The ones here on the side, they are actually wired together. So anytime either one of them hits, uh, they both uh, will be actually energized. And one thing that was strange is that it, if, if the end of stroke switch on either one of these doesn't actually uh, open up, it will hold the thing on. So uh, there's a little trick where you can take one of those end of stroke switches, open it all the way up, and that way when both of them are being activated at, at either time, there's only one end of stroke switch that, that it depends on and uh, made that change and that definitely helped it. But there was, there was evidence of already some, some damage where, where it had been sticking before. So uh, these coils uh, had to be replaced. Um, the stepper unit down here, all of those contacts, every one, every one of them uh, was you know, scrubbed down. The whole spider was removed, cleaned, put back. Uh, lots of little adjustments just with the actual mechanism to make it make it work. But um, really, uh, as far as the underside of the play field, it really over, overall wasn't too awful bad. It was just a matter of just kind of chasing down and diagnosing some of these issues. Getting down into the uh, down in the cabinet. There were a few switches down here that needed to be just a little, little bit of tweak, a little bit of cleaning, uh, but for the most part, again, uh, it was really functional. So looking closer at the at the actual play field itself, I already mentioned I had rebuilt the, the flippers. All the plastics they are original, uh, with, with the exception of the pop bumper caps. Uh, these are all brand new. This one was a little bit of an odd dog because of the way that. Uh, the, the switch is located here and the uh, actual, actual mechanism for the pop bumper itself. It, had, it was originally just twisted to the side. Normally the screw holes would be, you know, at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock uh, for it to, you know, all the artwork to line up correctly. But there, the, the original cap actually had the hole here and here and you can't get it. So I was able to get this cap that had the correct artwork, but basically I had to base, make uh, some new holes for it to line up. Uh, with the base of the, or yeah, the body of the, of the pop bumper. Uh, the one in the back, this one doesn't have any artwork. It, it was a new one. The original artwork does say, hey, you score one card point uh, every time you hit that pop bumper. And I'll explain that a little bit later when I start to show the play of the game. But uh, all these rollovers, those are all brand new. Uh, one of them had, had broken. Uh, all of the bands, these are actually original rubber bands. Um, I might actually at some point switch them back over to, to silicone bands. 
Uh, but again, that's one of those things where you add a little bit more money that you didn't necessarily have to have. Uh, all of the, the lights I mentioned earlier are LEDs. Um, and it's a mixture of between just the, uh, the Comet 2 SMD uh, clear bulb and some of their bullet bulbs. The bullet bulbs that look, have more of that incandescent look to them. Anytime that there was a bulb that would be visible from the, the uh, player's perspective, uh, I tend to, to, to use the bullet bulb. So this one here and this one here, are that's an example of that, as well as the one on each of these sides here. Other than that, the, the two SMD bulbs are a little brighter and just light it up a little better. There's also bulbs that were that are trapped underneath in the back there, so when I pull all that apart, they got put in place. Now, one thing I wanted to mention about the play field, it's really not bad, um, but there is a couple there are a couple issues. Like, there's a little worn spot here, and there is a general amount of um, of planking. If you look closely, you see the little the, the fine little cracks through it. But by doing a just a, a good cleaning and polishing over the whole surface and then rubbing it down with some carnauba wax. It really should preserve and I don't think it's gonna get any worse. I, I, it's, it's staying in a, uh, a, a good, um, you know, a good environment down in my basement and it should be pretty steady state. It's just, this is just the nature of it, of a, of a older game. This is very, very typical, but it really does not look bad. Going to the uh, back box, the glass is actually fantastic really no major amounts of flaking anywhere except just a little bit here that that's been uh looks like it's it's flaked away just a tiny bit but for the most part a lot of the back glass for a lot of games these age they look a lot worse than this so i was really pleased with it i did put in um the there are four incandescent blinker bulbs to get that blinking effect because that's that's original for that but actually all the rest of the bulbs are leds in the back uh, a lot of the things were not working uh, the mechanism at first uh that that would drive uh you know the 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 score uh the ball and play uh which player is up it was doing a lot of really crazy stuff it was just a matter of adjusting switches and cleaning switches uh, just it's just the nature of the beast and it just took a while to find it all um, and there was there were several items but i finally got it all working so take a peek in the back of the back box uh, all through here these are all the actual score reels that's for the player two here's for the player one every one of those were removed uh, all of the, the switches that are inside of those that control you know the position of what number you're at and then actually cleaning the reels. So all that need to be, you know, be pulled out to clean and uh, they were all taken care of. Uh, the reels that are down here at the bottom, these are the, the, the player's card hand. And again, those had to be uh, treated a lot like the you know, score reels. And uh, again, they just had to be cleaned and adjusted. So a, a couple of units here. So there's a stepper unit here that has to deal with the ball in play. Again, like the one that I showed down inside the cabinet, it just needed to be you know, uh, scrubbed down and cleaned and adjusted so that it's actually parking right in the middle of the contacts. You can get those off just a little bit and it does some really strange things. And over here on the side, this is called the match unit, which whenever you would have at the end of the game when you're gonna match a number, it handles that, but it does one other thing. So I mentioned earlier, this, is, this game is a lot like uh, playing a card game when you're trying to beat the dealer in 21. So what this has to do with also not only the match, but it determines what the hand that the dealer has got. And uh, had some weird things with that. Again, once I it, once it scrubbed it, cleaned it down, and adjusted it so that it was uh, orienting itself just right, it started working correctly. But that, that's a lot of what I ended up having to go focus on here in the back. There were a few other switches that got a little bit of adjustment, but uh, for the most part, everything else was fine. So I mentioned earlier that this game had been owned by a family really, I think, since it was new. And what's really kind of cool is you look down here, you don't have uh, you know, any of the, of, uh, the coin slots. Uh, there's not um, really, well, I guess there is some part of the coin mix, but you don't, you don't really actually have the, the, the mechanisms that would um, snap in to, to accept the coins. It's not there. But I don't think this game ever had that. It, it just didn't need it since it was a home use only game. All right, so now comes the fun part. We're going to give it a play. But before I do, let me just mention again. So here is 
the player, like for the player one, the card that they're holding. And for player two, that would be their hand that they're holding. Whenever the ball is drained for wh whichever player is on, once that, that ball is drained, the dealer's card, or I'm sorry, yeah, the dealer's hand is shown. So he's gonna have either a 17, 18, 19, or 20, or he's gonna bust. If he busts, you get a free ball or you get an extra ball. If you have a number that's, if you have a number that's higher than the dealer's uh, card, then the dealer will bust. I mean, again, or and then and then you get uh, you get a, a, uh, another ball. Now, if you go over 21, then up here it mentions at the top the player bust. So, how do you score points, and then how do you score uh, uh, actual uh, cards? So. These rollers, are, rollers at the top are worth 10 points, uh, not points for their score, but to, uh, points um, uh, for your actual cards. It also adds 100 to your score. This top bump bumper, every time you hit it, it adds one card. Whenever you land in either one of these saucers, it says card value and 50 points. So number one, it'll give you 50 points for your score but it's gonna give you the card value that is randomly displayed here. This, this amount changes as you play for every time that you roll over one of these advanced uh, card uh, rollovers, it will increase this, um, it'll increment at one time. So whatever it happens to be on, whenever you land in one of these um, saucers, it gives you that amount. The other thing I wanted to mention, if you you hit these pop bumpers here, they're worth 10 points each. That one's also worth 10 points. But if you happen to get the ball into the saucer here, it will turn on the joker light. And if you also get it over here, it'll turn on that joker light. And when those are both lit up, this is now worth 100 points. This one right here is also worth 100 points and it's also worth one card point. So that's, unless I'm missing something, actually when you drain here, it's also worth whatever card you have here. So. That's basically how it works. So the strategy here is you gotta keep your eye on this card card score. You may have a, a, a good uh, game going and you, you've got your ball really even under control, but you may have a really good hand and you don't wanna blow it up. You don't wanna bust. You may wanna just go ahead and choose to let the ball drain and then you'll go ahead and get a ball back and then you can play it over again. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention is I think if you do get the joker, it does open up this gate over here on the side. So if your ball does go down, the right hand drain, you get it back if you need to save it. So let's let's give it a shot. All right, here we go. Dealer has an 18. Of course, I only had four. It was a terrible hand. That's why I didn't get a. I didn't get the the, uh, the ball back. It went to ball number two. I don't know why it actually served it back just a minute ago. It's almost like it was a fluke or something. But I didn't quite catch it. Let's keep going. <laughs>
Okay, I've got 17. I've got to be careful about the bus. I would like to get another point. Now, see, if I get it in either one of these saucers, it's going to add six points. Or if I go here, it'll add six points. And that will cause me a bust. I definitely don't want to do that. But if I were to hit here this ace, I'm going to go ahead and cheat it. Let's get myself up to 21. All right. I'm going to let the ball drain. So, if, of course, if I weren't cheating, because I'm a fantastic player. I had a 21. The dealer had a 20. I get to shoot again. So, that's how this basically works. Let's play it fair now. Let's see how I can do it. fair and square so that basically wraps it up um this is really a fun game i tell you um if you ever get a chance to play one if you see one somewhere or heck if you're ever over on visiting levo and you want to check it out it's here i i, I definitely enjoy it I'm, I'm glad to uh to own this and enjoy it um and at some point i may actually redo the cat um i haven't decided that's that kind of depends on workload and working on other projects for other folks here, other pinball. I've got my uh, swing along who's been waiting patiently for a long time and that's got a, that's a big project yet. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching and hope you enjoyed.